Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I greatly appreciate it. This class is the Zoom class five called Silence Dreams. And I have to admit that from all the classes, I think I put in the most thought into this class from all the other ones. And as I said previously, that this group is about the questions, your questions. It's, it's how you see this evolving because this was not the way I, I saw it was going to go but um this was the questions that were posed at the end of the class and saying that this is what everyone needs to hear so there's going to be a lot of deep ideas it's really going to just be touching the surface but hopefully i'm going to be addressing um, the crux the core of what the questions are so before we get started there are some people who are joining for the first time and those who forget over the week let's recap what the classes were up until this point. Class war was, why are we here? And we said from the Ramchal, the first thing a person needs to do is to become the Adam HaShalom. You need to become yourself. Then you can have relationships with Hashem and then with other people. Yes, that's the main thing, but you cannot have a relationship with themselves until you become the perfect, the ultimate you. Again, not in a black and white, everything's along a gray, but that's the objective is to first connect with the self. Second class, we said, how? And we spoke about your intimate relationship with Tyra. As we said, Tyra is from the word hara, hara, which is pregnancy, is planting the seed inside the body, creating a living spirit, taking that divine inspiration in your head. When you learn ideas, that is divine when you're learning Tyra, and that comes into your body, changing your whole person. In class three, we spoke about what does it look like in practice? What does that mean? becoming you. And we said it means playing your part, defining yourself intrinsically, not extrinsically, not based on other people or comparison to other people or relative to other people. It's all about yourself. In class four, we spoke about staying connected, which really the first thing is to become connected to our bodies, which we said is to become grounded. We gave a, a actual uh, practices and we did practices regarding becoming connected to yourself now the thing is is that although i said that there's a lot of introduction a lot of agdama building and thank you everyone who sends me the emails i really appreciate it it's really special um when you give me that feedback and i like positive negative critical i like all type of feedback i say i'm a feedback junkie but i really appreciate it when people say that they're really getting a picture of where this is going so thank you for that but at the same time there are certain people who feel like this picture and the, re the reason why i love this picture is because the guy can't even get his hand over the water that's how they feel about their life and some people are frustrated in general and possibly even with the pace of these classes saying that um they don't know who they are what's expected of them what are they supposed to be doing you talk about just being but what does that mean? How am I supposed to do that? And life is going on while we still hold, have all the bad habits. It's difficult to have the serenity that it sounds like from the, from the concepts that we're talking about, to have this relationship with the self. What does that mean? So when, 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 the two, when there were some questions there at the end of the class, so as if anyone recalls, whoever was here last time, I was pointing out that, whoa, there's so many nuances in, in those questions and there's so many different pieces. But if I can, I want to elaborate on what I call the meta-analysis underlining these two questions. To me, it seems like there's two primary questions over here. And again, this is going to be from the deepest classes we've given so far, a little on the heavy side, but it's, it's coming to address the questions, which I was told that this is what everyone wants to hear, at least a large chunk of people. So to me, it seemed like that there was two questions, two primary questions. One was theoretical, which people don't understand. How can you be like being, like I always say, to be, when there's so much needing to do. I need to do this, I need to learn, I need to go, I need to take care of the kids, to become. How can I be when there's so much becoming? And if I believe, Hanamindi, that was really the crux of your question. There was many different pieces, <laughs> but what I recall, that was the crux of your question. That was a theoretical question. Then there was a practical question. How do I do it? How do I, okay, I believe you, I get it, I hear, it resonates with me, this idea about being myself. But how do I do it when I'm so encumbered by old habits, 
and what I call stuckness. I, I get it. I, I hear it sounds so ideal. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sold, but I can't do it. I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm just so stuck in my old narrative, my old life. How do we do this? And Zahava, uh, if, I, if, um, if I'm correct, I think that was really your question. Again, there was many pieces. I don't know if everyone even knows what their questions were. Zava's question the, was the aspect of the busy doing so much, like when is there time to be? Uh, something like that. That was more her question. And I don't even remember what I was asking, but something that like people are not sure if like they're being what they're supposed to be, if they're good enough, if what's, What's considered good enough? What's just exactly mean? so? So yeah. the way I'm phrasing it is, yeah. is Zahava. If I remember, Zahava said she's like, when I'm not sure if it's my neshama or my body that's eating. At the same time, I'm getting fat as I'm eating, and what right. do I do with all the old bad habits that I have? So the way I'm breaking it down in my meta analysis, of course, so many pieces to these questions was that yours was theoretical in the sense of like, and the way you you said it, in, there was many parts. So I'm picking one which I right. think is core is that. You talk about being, but you need to learn. You say, you need to go do this. I need to do chesed. And, you, and uh, how do I do all that and be at the same time? So that's more theoretical. And then Zahab was asking the practical, which is like, hello, how am I supposed to do that? Uh, there's so many different things. And one of the things she mentioned, which I think was a, a core thing, was we're just so much old habits, so much old stuff that we have. How exactly do we do this of, of becoming when we have all this old stuff? How do we get out of that? That's, I mean, that's, that's what I took away. There's a lot of different parts. That's okay. the way I'm breaking it down. So that's, I mean, does that sound like at least a good start? This is, it's, it's, a it's, a place to, it's a place to start. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. So I, I'm going to tell you about uh, a real, like, uh, spoiler now. I'm going to do some disclosure over here. Um, I'm going to tell you about the, at least a few years ago, this was the most difficult, challenging time in our house. Now, we have Baruch Hashem, very labor de gabunch. Uh, I like to use the word rambunctious, but Baruch Hashem, we love them. They're great kids. Um, and there's always action. The one, there's one time of the day that is the hardest. I mean, not so much the hardest, but it, it would evoke so much emotion in the parents. I don't think any of you could guess offhand. It wasn't supper time. It wasn't homework. <sighs> what it was was actually, oh, this was actually the slides. This was just some slides I put in about like relating to the questions about like, so who am I? That's like more of the theoretical part. Like, so what does that mean? Like if I'm being, I'm, I'm okay. Like how many of you say this a lot? Like, so I understand. So I, I practice self-compassion. Like, okay, so I'm a good person. I'm a good person. But then why do I always have to be busy doing so many different things to become who I'm supposed to be? So that was more like, that was what that slide was That's like, who am I? how I talk. Right. <laughs> and then this was more like, for Zahava's question, it was more like, um, like, I don't know. Like, okay, like, so I get it, but where do, what do I do? Where, where do I go? <laughs> so True. That was, more, that was more that slide. So this is the most difficult time, uh, at least a few years ago, was, it, this was, if this would happen, it didn't happen so often. It could happen once every few months. What brought up so much emotion in the parents was if someone woke up early. If one of the kids would get up early, the parents uh -huh, would flip out. Why? Because I'll tell you something about kids. They don't want to go back to sleep. And if one kid wakes up, another one wakes up, the whole house is up. So that would evoke so much emotion because that's it. The day started, it could be 4.30, it could be 5, whatever time it is, the house is up. The kids don't want to go back to sleep. Why do the kids not want to go back to sleep? Because when you're sleeping, our sages say, and as anyone could see, you're half dead. You're a 60th of death. Kids don't want to be dead. Kids want to be. They want to live. If I'm up, I'm up. I'm not going back to sleep. Therefore, you can understand the parents that want to sleep get very anxious, get very overwhelmed when the kids wake up. One kid wakes up and they start making noise. That's it. Every room, you suddenly the lights start going on. The house is up. 
So, so the question is like this, how does this look about kids? You know, if you, if you think about joy, you think about young kids. I know definitely my Sar and Devora are that age right now where I have like around a thousand pictures of them doing exactly like this picture. Um, what's the reason why? You know, like I think on the Mindy, in your question, you said something to the fact of like, you know, about self acceptance, about being comfortable on the one hand, and then like the paradox or the the dichotomy or whatever you want to call it is like so much to do and so busy and like how could that be being when there's so much to become so there's something unique about kids which we're going to learn about in tonight's class hopefully kids intuitively live as the morale says in Derek Haim and actually in this last week's parrot compared to Yavis. he says man is not complete so therefore, he doesn't, he's not stationary. He's constantly in motion. That's where the word emotion is related to. Driving him and her to their completeness. And even if it's it, it, to getting to the, to the action, you can't be in stationary. Man is not stationary. A woman is not stationary. Children have something unique about them that they're constantly in motion. Kids are always exploring, always living, always being. Now, what's the first characteristic that a baby is born with? So I always had understood and learned that the first emotion they have is fear. It's very primal. But I believe there's something that's more primary um, uh, and more original to a baby than fear. And that if you look at a baby, the first thing they notice is, the first thing that they actually experience is noticing, is observing. The baby looks, gazes, eyes wide open, Noticing their hand, noticing their fingers, noticing their mother. The first characteristic a child or human is born with, and we know the first is always primary, is curiosity. And that's why they're constantly creative and living and being. And one of our objectives, if we want to get everything we want, is a pus that can tell them. David Melch says, Ani That's actually Hashem talking to David. I today have given birth to you. Ask for me and I'll give it to you. A child, that's why the fist is closed, because a child wants. And that's actually a healthy attitude. Because you can get whatever you want if you're like a baby that was born, who has the eyes wide open, curious. Now, it's actually interesting. The word tinok, a baby, etymologically what it's related to is two words. One is from naki, which means pure, clean, and yunika, which means to draw. The innocence of the child is what gives them that power to be in a constant state of joy and of openness and a vulnerability. That innocence is what gives that motion, that becoming to the child. What we want, and hopefully we're gonna explore a little bit in tonight's class, is will the real you please stand up? This is an old picture of my Devorah. And you just see that, that joy that exudes from them. And yes, it's contagious and we love children. In tonight's class, we're going to hopefully discuss the real you. Now, the thing is, is that most people realize that as we grow, we lose some of that innocence. We lose some of that exuberance. We lose some of that excitement 
and joy and motion and getting up early in the morning and not going back to sleep? Where does that come from? What changes as we grow? So let me tell you a story. Story is about Rachele. Rachele is a young girl who loves to color. Coloring, painting, drawing. It's her favorite pastime. She colors pictures of her mother and her father and her brother, Jake, and of her sister and of her cousin, uh, Baruch, and of her teachers and of her neighbors, Mr. Sam. Now, she had all the 64 colors of the crayons and more. She had boxes and deluxe edition and the presidential edition, all types of coloring, papers, tools, utensils, you name it, she got it. She loved coloring. One year, as she was entering the second grade, she decides she loved her new teacher, Mora Stilt. Mora Stilt was a great teacher and she loved her. And two weeks into school, she comes home, she tells her mother, she goes, you know what? I love Mora Stilt. I want to draw a picture of her and I'm going to give her that picture. And the mother says, oh, that's amazing. That's great. And of course, like this girl, Achille, has so many pictures that like every wall is covered with her pictures. And on the fridge, there's a clip that has like 500 of her pictures because every day she has another 17 different drawings so she gets all excited she takes out her pencil and she's busy drawing and gets the markers and the crayons and she's drawing a picture and she's so excited and she stops for supper she goes back she makes this beautiful picture of Hamor. she comes in the next day into school and she has this picture in her folder and a little bit of it is sticking out and a girl in her class sees the picture sticking out. And she's like, what's that? And she's like, oh, no, nothing. And the girl pulls out the paper and sees the drawing of Mora Stilt. And the girl starts laughing. She goes, girls, come here. Racheli still draws with crayons. She's such a baby. And all the girls start laughing and pointing at Racheli that she drew a picture of Mora Stilt. Rachele's so embarrassed, she takes the picture and she stuffs it in her pocket and she sits down in her seat and she puts her head down. Later that day, she gets on the school bus and she goes home. Now, when Rachele usually comes home, she gets off the bus, she comes inside, she runs into her mother's arms, her mother gives us a kiss, sits her down, gets some milk and cookies, and then they schmooze and they talk and she plays. Today was very different. Today when she came home, she threw open the door and the mother goes, Racheli, where are you? She runs up to her stairs and the mother hears whoosh, a slam in the door and the door goes slamming shut. And then the mother hears a big crash and she's overcome. She doesn't know what's going on. She quickly runs upstairs. She sees something that shocks her. Racheli had her crayons in the top drawer where no one should get to her crayons, not her little brother, and her little sister to ruin her crayons. And Racheli was doing something that her mother could never imagine she would ever do. She was taking every crayon she had, cracking them, breaking them into a big brown box and crushing every crayon. Her mother goes, Racheli, what's going on? And Rachele's crying and she just jumps into her bed and goes under her, under her blanket. And the mother goes and sits by her and she goes, Rachele, what's going on? Rachele's sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And the mother goes, what's going on? Rachele, why are you breaking your crayons? She goes, I hate coloring. I hate coloring. I hate crayons. The mother goes, what do you mean? You love coloring. This is your passion. She goes, no, crayons are for babies. I don't color with crayons. What happens is that we have dreams, we have passions, we have joy, we have excitement in life. Children have no problem with the questions we ask over here in this group. They don't ask, 
How can you be and at the same time become? Children are constantly in motion, becoming, exploring, being. What happens? What happens as we get older? What changes? Sadly, what changes is a long list of different things, different fears that creep into us. We have the fear of failure. We have the fear of success. We have the fear of being judged. We have the fear of emotional pain. We have the fear of embarrassment. We have the fear of being abandoned or being alone. And the old time favorite, we have the fear of rejection, like Racheli experienced. We have the fear of expressing true feelings. We have the fear of intimacy. We have the fear of the unknown and fear of loss. And this, law, this list could go on and on and on. And each one of these, like you see, whoever has the visual sees some specifics of these fears. And maybe if we have time, we will go through some of them. Now, we're born with fears, like we mentioned. But, but that's, uh, what's the difference? What changes? If kids have fears, then how come they're so willing to be vulnerable and to be intimate and, 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 and going over to another kid? What happens is there's a difference between what's outside of you and what's inside of you. And again, I'm really just touching some pieces because I just want to get to the answer the questions. They're, they're loaded questions, but this is just um, the main idea is that there's something what's called situ situational doubt and then there's self-doubt. What happens is that kids experience the larger world with tamimus, with innocence, with purity. And yes, there are fears, but they realize it's the situation. What changes is is that that then becomes internalized. I'll give you one example how that happens. There's something called microtraumas. What are microtraumas? Microtraumas are subtly hurtful patterns of engaging with one another that can seem innocuous and therefore go unnoticed. Innocuous means to say it looks like it's innocent, like, like it's not a big deal. But should this mistreatment build up over time, it can diminish our sense of self-worth, raise our anxieties, and compromise our capacity for healthy relationships. And this happens all the time. This happens with all types of people that we engage with. And because we're so trusting, because we're so vulnerable, when we're not aware, those unhealthy relationships create what's called a micro trauma, which then has PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which we then have a high sense of stress that we're living with constantly on a constant basis, not even aware of that. We think, like everyone's talking about the new normal, that becomes the new normal. Now, I actually love this. This really epitomizes what some people um, have to have to put up with which is just be yourself <laughs> and then the person says not like that but the person didn't it looks the same as in both pictures but what happens is that it, it, what's interesting is that what does it mean when things are internalized what's inside of us our emotions and our thoughts when it becomes internalized and it becomes about us, it becomes about our thoughts and our feelings. And if we're told things about us, not about the situation, then we don't trust anymore our thoughts and our feelings. And we become afraid of being intimate. We have afraid about being vulnerable. We have all these types of fears because it doesn't feel good. And it was said about us, not about 
the situation. And therefore, we live our life on the defense, protecting ourselves. Instead of feeling that pain, we learn that if we want to keep ourselves safe, we could build walls. And that's called comfort. And that's what we look for. We look for comfort over pleasure, over becoming. So that's the first half of explaining the question is that the question comes because of our fears. Now, there's so much to speak about it. And if anyone has an important question, please feel free to jump in. And there's so much to say, but I'm gonna move on to the next part. How do we get this innocence back? Because that's really what we're looking for. The kids are the ones who are totally being and becoming. The emotion of curiosity, which is natural and endemic to a child, is that experience, like, like Maral says, of misnayea tamid. It doesn't mean just being self-compassionate, self-complacency. Being and becoming are not a contradiction. They actually are harmonious, together, becoming the complete you, and at the same time, experiencing everything in the moment. There's an incredible safer from Uklaina is Kam Shapiro from Piyasetzna, the, the famous Piyasetzna, um, who was killed Hashem Yikandama in the ghetto in World War II. He's known for his safer, Chaim Esat and some other Svarm. He has a very small safer called B'nai Machshav Ataiva, incredible group that he created. I would like to think that this group is something similar to that in that idea, where they made a Chabura of people that were for the objective of growth. And he says something, there's a lot of things that are alluded to over there, and he says something so incredible that's so important for this, these questions that we're addressing. Um, I'm going to read it. I hope it's not going to be too laborious, but the idea here is critical. He says, Kedalacha, you should know. In the way of revealing the essence of a person, a person's soul, there's many times we've got to learn from a child. What are we learning from a child? They're not premeditated, what's called conscious. From itself, his essence just gets revealed in many different ways. And he does movements and actions. Like the movement of his soul. He's just opening up, unburdening, expressing, being. So says the Piyasatna, you also. Experience your own song from your own expression. Without saying anything, without using words, without any requests. Your soul should just sing and pour out. And just should come out. And it says, It's not specifically a song of brokenheartedness, also with a song of joy. And in, in, in passing the piece, that's and obviously telling us about the great, that's, there's a reason why iTunes, why Apple makes so much money is because song is such a powerful medium that you could use all of these to reveal your soul. That's the path of the pious one. Who Sometimes he cries by a happy song, and even when he's dancing, he could be crying. And sometimes he could be dancing by the song of Kol Nidre. It's just, you're just being. Whatever's coming out in the moment, it could be tears, it could be joy. Just let it be. That's what we see from a child. If you're at a group of Hasidim when they're singing in Bitzfila, whether by davening, by a meal, or by some other way, 
Tiran and Gamata Imam, sing with them. Don't sing because you want to sing to get the words, just to pour out your soul. And it talks about the prophet when he would prophesy, would be with song and having the spirit, being spirited. For example, by the song by says, by the chasna, enter into the song. Let the melody bring out yourself. It's not only when you're at a group of chasidim when they're singing. In your house too. Anytime that you feel that you're ready for this, you're open for this, you could sing. I once caught myself in my office space. I was dancing. Go ahead. You don't have to scream loud noises. You could sing just a soft little song. And it's that sound it is heard in the heavens. So that's a little bit lengthy, and, and there's a lot to talk about, a lot of the ideas that he's saying, and even what he doesn't say, what he says further on. But he tells us the secret of being and becoming like the child. Don't be so conscious of what you are and who you are. Just be like the child. Now, one second, one second Shlami. I'm interjecting. The aspect of becoming, I'm talking about an adult has a lot more responsibility than a child has. I don't mean in regards to taking care of the house this time, whatever. I'm saying in regards to mitzvos. We have things that we need to be doing, have to be doing, punished if we don't do. There's a bigger O, so you can't just be. No? So, yeah, so, so, so what we're saying here is also is that children also can't, they also can't just be. What I mean they can't just be? Let's understand. They don't want to just be. They want to become. They have their eyes open. Let's understand. This is what I gave the introduction for. And now this is where the conversation obviously is going to start opening up a little bit. What, is, what changed? Why did we change? We went to dreams, the exploration, the curiosity we had as children. Where did it go? You know, one of the signs I have, and please don't get shaken by this, is how do you know a kid broke? Meaning, that something happened, a teacher made fun of him, a parent, set, a parent disregarded them, uh, they were left out of a game, left out of a group. How do you know that the child broke, like is breaking their crayons? Is if they want to go to sleep. Or they want to go back to sleep in the morning. A child doesn't want to go to sleep. My kid was just fighting me just before. He doesn't want to go to sleep. Why not? I want to go to sleep. What's the difference? I want to live. I want to become. And you have that inside of you too. You have that inner child who wants to be. So obviously this is complex. And obviously there's going to be so many different pieces. But I have to try to break it down. There's an hour group. There's very little that I could do in an hour. But I'm trying to break it down to the core. And the core of it all, if you get to the bottom, the bottom is one thing that changes that. And those are the fears. It's not about the obligations. It's not about the things you have to do. Kids have tons to do and they want to do it and they can't wait to do it. Now, you have to understand, obviously as we grow, there's other things we need to do. And then there's things that are beyond that. Like kids don't want to necessarily, let's say, go to school, right? But those are not the things that he wants to do. There are things that when we grow into them, we also want to do them. But even things we want to do, we're not doing anymore. So it's a developmental model. So again, there's going to be so many different pieces. I'm trying to keep the, 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 the abstract here uh, as pure as possible. The one thing that changes is that our fears cripple our ability to dream. So I'm not saying there's not other pieces here, but it's not the obligations. Kids have tons of obligations. He's got to play that game. He's got to go get that thing, but he's enjoying that. You also do. No, that's not true. Yes, you do. I'll tell you why you don't want to do it is because of these fears. You're afraid of failing. You're afraid what's gonna happen when you succeed, there's gonna be all the pressure to perform at a high level. You're afraid of being judged. Of course you wanna get on that stage. Of course you wanna do all these things. But people can say, oh, oh, look at that, look at that. 
that you have emotional pain. It, was, it hurt so much when that teacher made fun of you, when you were told what they're getting is 64. There's a fear of embarrassment. There's a fear of being abandoned or being alone. So I'm not going to go out there because then that's related to being rejected. And no one wants to be rejected. There's the fear of expressing your true feelings because you, no one can hold the space for you. There's the fear of intimacy because then they're going to see the real you. And what's so bad about the real you? Because you were told that the real you is not good. And there's the fear of the unknown. But kids love the unknown. <laughs> Understand what it comes down to, what cripples us, is not the obligations. That's the paradigm I wanted to paint for tonight. Now, I know it's not going to resolve everything, but this is what it comes down to. We're born being and becoming. That is called curiosity. That is what the morale says, you're always in motion, becoming who you are. What stops us are the fears, the micro traumas, people telling us, be yourself, but not like that. What do you mean, not like that? That's who I am. So we're trying to reclaim some of that, at least in theory and some practical, hopefully, like Sahabat asked, how to do that? How do we learn from the child? How do we become and then be? So there's, there was um, a, a, a TED talk from many years ago. I remember hearing about, and I really liked the way he put it down. He calls it the three A's of awesome. And there's so much to talk about it. We're not going to go into great detail, but they really epitomize a child. And this is really what the piece that's is saying. The three A's of awesome, awesome are attitude. The attitude that you bring to the table of how you view life. And that's what actually what made this person make, he actually made, it was like, became the blog of the year. He got like, I don't know how many thousands, a hundred of thousands, a million, whatever hits he got, which was basically noticing all the small things in life that we take for granted. It's the attitude of look at all that's not working out, look at all the challenges, or what it is good out there, which is related to awareness. You ever see a, a kid looking at a bug? <laughs> it's like, whoa. And they're just wide-eyed and aware of what's out there, not sticking their head in the sand, putting their head under the cover, under the blanket, which is related to authenticity. Kids are just being them. They don't know any better than not to be them. Those are the three A's of awesome. Those are the ways, I mean, again, we could talk about this. If everyone, not in this class, but I'm saying, or if we do have time, we could. But if we could acquire these three A's of awesome, then we're learning from children like the P.S. Etzna says. Then we have no problem being who we are and becoming. We're being authentically ourselves, which of course we're afraid to because we're going to be rejected. So we one second, Shlaimi, if somebody would ask an example of how you would describe, like, who is that, per what is the essence of that person? How, what kind of descriptions would you give? What is them? They are, you see, that's what I'm saying. Let, let me ask you a question. Does a kid know who they are? Depends what kind of kid. Some kids, the yes. Kid, the young kid, a girl, that's, a girl that's five years old. Um, this, she could be. I mean, she might not be on target necessarily, but some kids... What, is, what do you think she knows about herself? Her hair color? What does she know? I like this and I want this. Some people exactly, are... Exactly, exactly. So let me ask you a question. Do you know what you... What you I mean, do you put it this way. Do you think but you there know are less five -year -old than the girl who's like, 16 years old? I don't know. I don't know. There are some right. kids. Right, so definitely some that won't know. There are some that definitely won't know anything. And even those who will know, she'll know she likes ice cream, but she'll know her character. She'll know what her goals are in life. No, she doesn't know anything. She wants to be the princess for Purim. That's all she knows. Mm -hmm. What the BSS is teaching us is, we cre and this is there's so much to talk about, but we create um, artificial structures that rob us of being ourselves. BSS is saying, be yourself. 
Be like the child. Come with a good attitude. Come with your eyes wide open and be yourself. Be authentic. Now, I know it's an oversimplification, but the reason why there's so much blocking us is because of the fears. Like, show me, how could you say that? Why no, not? Just ask me. <laughs> Why not? Think of what's yourself. I understand that it's just be you. Just come gonna... with no agenda. I get it. But give a, an example of exactly. a, some specific so people can get it, sort of. That is it. That it, I, there's no description that could be given? There's, again, there's I know later... that could be ever-changing, but there is me, some, some sort of a content. Let me, let me, I, I, I'll explain to you something. There's, yeah. later, there's later levels of sophistication of nuances in developing higher levels of self. Just like if you were, if, if you ask the six-year-old, she'll know what she likes to eat. But she wanted the same sophistication of, let's say, culinary delights like a 36-year-old. Because the 36-year-old has already experienced and tested and, and done her research. That's the same with the self. We're getting too ahead of ourselves when we're asking, so who am I? What am I? You are you. Be like the child. You mean there's no ingredients of you? Be you. There's no more than just be you. Get out there, girl, and go take the world by storm. Come with a good attitude. Be aware. Eyes wide open. And be authentic. That's the piece that's not. I can't believe that there's no you're... description that you can give when someone's being authentic. I, they're I'll authentic tell you why when they're I'll jovial. Tell you why they're jokey. Some people are not jokey. That's a natural for them. It's not like they're trying to be that's, anything. I'm not putting it into course. categories. It's descriptive. Of course. But that's, yeah. I was saying, I, so that's what I'm saying. When I mentioned the previous class and there was a woman who emailed me, I, I sent her a, a page with characteristics that I use with people that I work with. There are characteristics that describe a person. But that's not the person. If I take a picture that has pixels and you ask me, can you describe me the person? I say, yeah, look at those pixels. See that black pixel? See that white pixel? That's, that, that's Chana Mindy. That's not Chana Mindy. The pixel together create the picture. It's the whole person. That is the person. But so I would describe that person with, you see all those pixels, that's that person. So that's what I mean. Exactly. But, no, but it's not just, but it's not just some total of the pixels. So actually, my Raul, in many places, he, he says that there's three parts to a person. He says the fourth thing is the totality of the person. So yeah, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what you, what you want to know is a later, later class. When we're going to talk about the sophistication of self-awareness and self-knowledge, we're going to talk about pieces of that. But that's, 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 that's uh, what I wanted to answer was your question. Your question was, how can we be at the same time become? You said it in different words, but that's the way I understood it. And the answer I'm giving is by becoming like the child is how we could be and become at the same time. The reason why we don't relate to that is because all the fears that block us from getting it. That is the answer to the question. Now, this is answering Zahaba's question. So Hava's question was, again, the way I'm saying it, of course, there's so many different pieces and she might think that wasn't exactly my question, but it's definitely part of a question, which is okay, I get it. You want me just to be? How do I be when I'm so tied up in all my old stuff and all the mistakes I made in life? I can't just be. I can't get out of this quagmire. So this relates to my father, Oliver Shalom's, one of his favorite songs, and we actually sang it by the Shleishim, which was very emotional. A song from Shleim Kalbach, who he played with many times and was close with. And, um, oh, it's not even playing. <laughs> so, the, oh, I think it's on a different setting, that's why. So I actually had the recording to play um, on this thing, a song of Shleim Kalbach, but I'll sing it then. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, 
Return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are born and reborn again. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are born and reborn again. Return again. Return again. Return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Bahoshe koyamim la boy dosum Ulivim lishidam Ulizimram. It's actually some words that we sang by the Shlashim that many people don't know. He didn't always sing these words, but it was so appropriate by the Shleishim. Breathe in the joys of your father before you, who died with the song of the Lord on his lips. And he said, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. What is this song saying? What this song is saying is a deep secret that we Jewish people know that's so critical, which is answering Zahaba's question. This concept is so important that the Gemara tells us it was before the world was created because Hashem knew about all the mistakes we're going to make, all the guilt and the shame we're going to feel, which is going to create all the fears that we're going to be crippled by, and how we're going to go on living. So the morale in the Siva Tshuva Perik Beis says the following fundamental, critical piece. It says, Dalacha, you should know. Ki ha teshuva hila adam. What is teshuva? We spend at least once a year fully engaged of teshuva. Teshuva is something we're doing constantly. We daven three times a day. Hashiveinu veinu. We have a whole bracha teshuva. We spend 40 days doing teshuva in Yom Neiran. What is teshuva? Teshuva is to a person. Mitzad ki ha adam nivra baschalasa b'leichat. Like we said, a tinok is naki. Starts off clean without sin. That's why a child is open, is vulnerable. When a person goes back to his self, which we'll talk about that's coming back to Hashem, and these are critical words, you go back to your beginning. Go back to being a child. Stop running. Stop, stop hiding. Why are you so afraid? Why are you coming up with questions and answers to defend to protect anything but to be. Go back to who you are. Return to your soul who you are, what you are. Says Maral, that's why Chuba brings healing. What is healing? Healing in the physical sense, in the emotional sense, in traumatic sense, in spiritual. It's all coming back to the original state, which was healthy. Chuva is coming back to what you are to who you are the land of your soul that's what shuva is how do we go back to becoming who we are to borrow a skill from dbt dialectical behavioral therapy that's called turning the mind how do we do this step by step observe that you're not accepting and we all experience that Look for anger, bitterness, annoyance. We're just touching this, but anyone who's hearing or seeing this could relate to this. Avoiding emotions, saying, why me? Why is this happening? I can't stand this. It shouldn't be this way. First, notice. What we were doing here in this class, I know some people might be frustrated, like, couldn't he just tell us how to be and become? No. First, observe that you're not accepting. Notice that all your questions, it's a well-known thing that a lot of questions are answers. They're not, it's protecting you. Observe that you're not accepting. First notice, realize I'm pushing life away. I'm pushing my husband away. I'm pushing my mother away. I'm pushing my daughter away. I'm pushing my coworker away. I'm pushing my boss away. I'm pushing my workers away. I'm pushing my neighbors away. I'm pushing my sister away. First notice, you're pushing that anger away. First observe that you're not accepting. 
Then go within yourself and make an inner commitment to accept reality as it is. So you have to, that's really what tshuva is. Come back, notice that you're not being who you are. Go within yourself, make that commitment to accept reality as it is. Now, what's going to happen is that's what's very cool about this skill, because that's what we call radical acceptance. Again, I'm not going to confuse the secular ideas with the Jewish ideas and just bringing in the concepts. I'm not saying it's the same exact thing. There's, there are obviously many differences, but just to bring out the idea. But radical acceptance doesn't help because you'll accept one moment and three minutes later, you're screaming at your daughter. You're screaming at your husband. You're, what happened? This is where the skill was called turning the mind comes in. Do it again. And it's such an important skill over and over. Keep turning your mind to acceptance each time you come to the fork in the road where you can reject reality or accept it. Where you can make the wall or you can open yourself up. I actually have a, a paper a slide that's gonna be beautiful that when I talk to people about marriage, there's two different, there's really a fork in the road. And I see it time and time again. And we'll talk about it. It's called open mind or closed mind. It's either being defensive or being vulnerable. Notice that you're going back to your old coping mechanisms of defending yourself and protecting yourself. And that's okay. Don't judge yourself for that, but just observe that. Notice yourself doing that. Go inside yourself. Make that commitment to accept reality. Now, obviously, people might have a difficulty with accepting that. We could talk about that at a future class, too. This, this, is, this is endless. But when you do come to that commitment, which you have, do it again and again and again. And develop a plan for catching yourself in the future when you drift out of acceptance. So notice that and bring yourself back and back again. That's what Teshuvah is. Now, just for those who like really need techniques, we don't have time, but I'm just gonna throw out some of the things you never know, something might stick. There's a, I have a vart that's like, it's actually, on, it's also on Torah anytime. It's, it was a, one of those um, pace out of births of inspiration, very deep, very heavy. Take a listen if you're very interested. It talks about a very unique interpretation of the bracha, burning the first of Israelites. But the idea of it is, is lean into your imperfections. It holds the secret to your overdeveloped ego strength, which is on some level your own self. And Hashem made it that way, like the famous metaphor, I, I, I'm not sure if I said it here on this group once before, but that of like the butterfly, which the butterfly is in the cocoon as a caterpillar. And the butterfly has to develop its, its wings by beating against the cocoon. And one time someone saw the, 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 the caterpillar in such frustration and she opened it up to let them out and the caterpillar fell to the floor and withered away because it only developed the wings by, by banging against the cocoon. All your frustration, the burden of the job is for chasreinon. And we say this so many times a day, this bracha, do we think about it? Hashem makes many souls and all their lackings. And we say, Hashem why do you make all these lackings? Hashem actually gives us those challenges to create. So lean into your imperfections. Rabbi Tzadik is very busy with this. Those imperfections actually hold your greatest strengths. So don't be afraid of leaning into your imperfections. Another skill is create a safe place. And again, we could talk about these. If anyone has, please email us, theselfprojectclass at gmail.com. We'll open up all types of questions and comments. But create a safe place where the real, which is, it could be a certain room or house or place or coffee shop or person. Or imagine, you could create what's called an imaginary safe place. But you need safety because without safety, you can't do anything. Therefore, when a person's in trauma, they're in survival mode. They can't be in growth mode. Also, get a healthy relationship because that with mirror neurons actually helps us become. So if you want to start becoming, get a good person in your life, a mentor, a friend. Find somebody. Get a healthy relationship. Identify and focus on the positives in your life and on your strengths. And my favorite, one of my all-time favorites, is self-talk, which this is a skill related to that. I'm just going to go through it quickly, which actually the whole skill is not a quick skill, but take a deep breath and relax. That's the first step. For about 15 seconds, let yourself focus on the voice of your inner critic and feel all the, all the corresponding emotions. Because this is all like we're saying what's stopping us. So notice that inner critic. And notice all that emotion that comes. 
And then step three is now focus on a positive thought. Imagine a possible future scenario that's extremely positive. Like I tell people all the time, people are worried, I'm gonna marry with my daughter, how am I gonna have enough parnasa? I go, you're spending 15 years worrying about how you're gonna marry your daughter. I go, you know what I do? I imagine walking my daughter down to the chuppah. I start smiling, I start tearing at the eyes. Why is, wh now create a positive thought. Imagine a possible future scenario that's extremely positive. And step four is focus your awareness on the fact that both of those thoughts originate in your brain. <laughs> and therefore, it doesn't necessarily mean one thing more than the other. It detaches you from your thoughts and allows you to have control over your mind, not your mind having control over you. So that's always my sign that that's the end of the PowerPoints. I know I don't leave that much time for questions, but let me just quickly recap what we spoke about. We mentioned two questions that were brought up in the last class, which I was told you got to discuss because even though I have a trajectory of building up the conceptual framework about what does the self mean, that this is an important question. And the question we said was both theoretical and practical, at least the way I'm, I understood it. The theoretical question was, you say about being, but there's always things you have to do becoming. And we said, that's not a contradiction. The peace assessment says, learn from children. They're always being in the moment, and yet they're always becoming because we expand at the rate of time. We, it, we automatically expand, and that's being, and we just get bigger and bigger being. So that's answering the theoretical question. Then Zahava's question was more practical, but how do I get out of that? I'm so stuck in the old story. So we said, that's what tshuva is. That's what the DBT skill of turning the mind is. That's what it means coming back to being, to who you are, to what you are. And that is allowing yourself to be vulnerable in the moment and not being controlled by your fears. When you're able to break through those fears, then you could be and then you could become. And then that allows you to start this self project and not be crippled by the fears. All right, I'm gonna shoot. Now start shooting. Tell me what you've been addressed. Anyone any questions? Or me? I'm, I'm staying quiet. I just, the reason why I asked you to give some specifics of like who you are, I feel like people don't know that if you guide them somewhat, even the aspect of mirror neurons, like children, they don't copy their parents exactly, but they get an idea based on what the parents are showing them. Like children will know whether I like this or I don't like this. There's like, I feel like people don't know. So who am I? What? That's the point. The point is the kids don't, the kids are not self-conscious. Kids right. are not invested in being themselves and we'll actually learn as we go along this project, is that the objective, the most healthiest people are not self-conscious at all. They're totally that's where chesed, that's the real chesed. The problem Not is even self-conscious, just observationally, like... For what purpose? Am I, what am Why I? do I need that for? Why can't I just go outside, go to shul, go to, the, go to the class? Why can't I just go out and be... Now, I know why. There's fears. And I know it's not... There. I, can't, that's, I can't go through everyone's fears here on the group. Maybe if we find a way to do something like that. But, but that's what it is. So the point of describing a person, it's going to be important for their prati as they work. I have to answer I the I feel like you're question. responding like a psychologist would say, I don't know, you tell me, how do you feel? Like, how does that, that make like you? Like, you, but isn't that's that the wrong answer. Isn't that frustrating when they do that? No, too? I mean, but he is a psychologist almost. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mindy, I'm, saying, I'm loving this. I feel like there's an answer, you, but your doctor <laughs> won't even give an answer. I mean, if somebody asks me who I am, I could give descriptions. I mean, I mean, this is my opinion, and I can give descriptions of other people. I'm asking you i want to hear from you the more the up 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 knowledgeable person give people an idea and so, i definitely think there's some kind of description okay so let, so let me so let, let, so let me let me tell you that the, the answer to your question mm -hmm. let me first show that i answered the old question mm -hmm. the answer to the old question was that ramchal was always busy he says first get the big picture you get the big picture, and you understand the category. Let's say you want to go into finances, or you want to go into business. You have to first understand how business works. Then you could be busy with the nitty gritty about, okay, so how do we do this? Got to do shipping, got to do handling, got to go to the invoice, you got to do all these different things. First, you got to understand that the point of business is to make money. If you don't understand it, you got a, you got a business. So right. in general, the question was answered the way I described it. 
Now, you're asking a specific question, which I told you, it's a sophisticated question. And of course, there's answers. And yes, the real knowledgeable a person becomes what's called self-knowledge is they're going to then know things about themselves. So they're going to know that they're conscientious. They're going to know that they're caring. They're going to know that they're thoughtful. They're going to know that they're exuberant. They're going to know all these different things about okay. themselves. And they're going to find it out generally by being curious, by being open-minded, by being aware, by being authentic. But you can't do any of that. Of course, I could tell you things about you. That's what we said in the other class. We said, you want to know who you are? Ask your 10 closest people. No, for They'll sure. I just, you know. No, I agree with you, Shlaimi. I'm just saying certain people are naturally more in touch with themselves. I wasn't asking other people, who am I? Who am I? I don't know. I'm just this type of person that, I don't know, I get it. I'm more in touch with my feelings. And other people, they're more into, you know, following the rules, following this. I don't know. It's like, who am I? And I'm like, how could you not see? To me, so, it's like so. So weird. So doesn't that, I was answering this class, where does that come from? Kids, why don't kids have that problem? Why don't kids have the problem about not knowing themselves? Why does the kid not have the problem? A Some kid, kid do what happens to be. They might not be aware of the aspect that they, they don't, don't know they who don't. they you are, but nature. they do they don't feel have a that, little bit lost. Kids not don't all have kids that, are very much not, themselves. But kids don't have that handicap that we're just talking about. There's nature. Some kids have pachtanit. Some people have certain natures inside of them that, that's how they experience the world, but that's not a the dysfunction. What we call, we talk about dysfunction because everyone has ways that, they, that their path in life takes them. That's not dysfunctional. We talk about when our fears cripple ourselves. The reason why people don't know themselves is a defense. It's protecting themselves. Yeah, I don't know who I am, and therefore I'm just going to follow what everyone else tells me. So the, the answer to that question starts when, we allow, when we're able to uh, uh, become vulnerable. And then we could be like the child. Then all the answers will come pouring in. So again, it's not a black and white world. Of course, you can have a, a Selah Harab, you can have a Kanei you can have many different people who could help share that knowledge with you. But you cannot do really any of them until you first do what we spoke about tonight. Unless you become like the child, like the PSS and says, get used to it into yourself. Just start singing and letting it unburden. Of course, it's complicated. I make a living on that. But that doesn't mean to say that the answer is not simple. The work might be hard. True, but I'm saying people can help you see certain aspects about yourself, and then you can start becoming, like, true, seeing true. yourself. True. You Obviously. want me to start telling you about you? Is that the question? No, not at all. Totally not. I'm joking. I'm saying, so, what's, so, what's, the, so what's the question about that? My specific? question is for everyone else that has this question who am I? What, what's special about me? What's different? Well, it's like, you know, life could go on without me. Well, it doesn't matter if I'm here, there, now. Like, I don't know. This person does this. Uh, like, what am I? You know? And I have my opinions, and I try to share these things with people. It hurts me that they don't see it. And I want you, who has all your knowledge, to, like, start throwing, like, certain seeds of, like, specific descriptions and like people can sort of identify with it obviously they can expound okay. upon it so, so let me just tell you something so let me so let me say two points which i, I think i'm saying uh, I, I i think we both reiterating and it sounds like we're, right. we're coming from the so basically I, I i still hold to the point that the reason why they say these things and it's a big idea in psychology which is when we have a big problem we tend to create a decoy a distraction with a quote a smaller problem so we're going to say, we don't know what's so special about ourselves. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to convince ourselves of that because there's actually a bigger problem that, that's actually the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, that we're just going to hold on to this one, not to open up to get this one. So, and, 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 and my proof is children. That children don't say, what's so special about me? They might ask those questions, but that doesn't stop them from going out and playing. That doesn't stop them from going out and meeting new people and going to the store. That doesn't stop them. What stops us is our fears. Now, regarding your question about certain ideas, so again, uh, maybe, you know what, I had it, you know what, maybe I'll put it on the, remind me, I'll put on the actual PowerPoint next time. I emailed it to a certain woman. It has, it's actually a list of character traits which I use for people, and it is very useful. It does start telling you certain things, and I tell them, I'll tell it to everyone here. Uh, you know what, could I put it on right now? I don't think I'm going to put it on right now, but the point is, I had, I have people, I say, go through the whole list, look at all the character traits, pick up, all those that even sound like there's a possibility that it's you. And after you finish going through all those, then pick out the top 10. I want you to memorize the top 10 
And I want you to give an example for each one. And it's incredible. People start noticing things about them, never knew and they become wearing it like a, pro, like a badge of honor, a pride. Exactly, <laughs> Shlomo, that's exactly what I mean. That's exactly what I'm trying to say because I see these things in people and it hurts me that they don't see it in themselves. Like not everybody's yeah. supposed to like do the most chesed in the world. Everyone's special for their own unique way, their own unique ingredients. Exactly what you said. Oh, you know, like those 10 things and they, how, you know, this scenario had applied and that scenario. And it's beautiful. And I, I would, I want everyone to notice it about themselves. It's, it's the noticing that that's key. The noticing. Anyway, so, pretty much. So that's what I'm saying. So answered. that noticing, that noticing could be artificial or natural. So you're right. I think we're both right. That I was saying the natural and you're saying the artificial. I was saying. No, like what just, you gave this girl gave her, you know, Certain things come natural to people, mm -hmm. and other people have to be taught. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you, like other people, natural dancing, and other people uh, need to learn the steps. And you know, one, two, three, four, five. Right. Anyway. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm just showing that we all had it and we lost it, and we could just undo the fears, or you could do it the behavioral way. Yeah, that wasn't true. Right. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? I mean, should we open it up? Anyone have any questions? Or um, hold on. Let me see what the chat late, so. Um, I know it's late. I'm just reading what I see two wrote. people that speak. I see two people that are unmuted that want to say something. Okay. Oh. What, one sec. Wait, first let me just read what Esther wrote. Hold on a second. Are you equals the awareness, consciousness of the thoughts and feelings inside? Uh, like there is a thought in me, a feeling in me, not identifying with it. Basically, the neshama. I'm just reading what she wrote. And then she said, aren't you anything you want to be? All other traits are what the conditioned mind tells you. Okay, I hear that. Okay, anyway, uh, the first people that are were unmuted. Hold on. I, okay. Asked to unmute. Okay, anyone has questions? Also, yeah, just to add that, so it, it's really interesting that you, Hannah Mendy, you're doing an awesome job. Thank you. <laughs> Fly me for sure, but mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Um, I had so many comments, but I'm just thinking right now from what you just said. What are you also? What you what your deepest desires are? Like yes. what you really want to be? Yes. You nailed the reason it. why okay, you nailed it. Yeah, you nailed it, it on, so on so many on so many different fronts. You nailed it. Kabbalistically, psychologically. And that's why the class was called Silence Dreams, because this class is about that. you grew up a dreamer. Every girl wanted to be the princess, wanted to be the Esther Malka, wanted to be the queen. And then we broke. We broke the crayons. We said, oh, Queen Esther is for babies. We all want to be the when princess. When you say all these stories, I get emotional for these <laughs> little kids. It is. It's sad. <laughs> We all have that inner child who dreams, and the Jewish people are the dreamers. The Jewish people always held the, the candle for the world to say, you can dream, you can have a family, you can have spirituality, you can have growth. We are the dreamers. We held the light, the torch for the world. And now at the end of time, it's parichayim. The Jewish people are losing the dream, and we're trying to reclaim that dream, the inner child. We have that nar. The narrative in the word of movement, of shaking. Every child is moving, wants to be. What happened to us? That's what we're trying to reclaim. It's Kabbalistically, you're not even your neshama. You're your rotsen. The word nefesh actually means, emyeshes nafshecha means desire. Every child knows what they want. You also do. You cover it up with fears. You know what you really want. And you don't even know because you buried it so deep down into your body that your body is struggling to hold on to it because your body's the contain like we spoke in the last class. So yeah, you nailed it when you said it's your deepest desires. That's exactly who you are. Kabbalistic, you're not even, you say like kind of shamish and this out to be. You're not neshama. You're not your nefesh. You're not your guf. You're your ruts. That's what you are. But that's too deep. I will, but I just wanted to say you nailed it. Yeah, no, it's, I don't, I don't know. To me, it's not too deep. That's, yeah, that's what it is. That's what we need to get in touch with. That's what people need to hear. People need to see. And it's like, uh, yeah, exactly what you're saying. People lost it. It's covered up with 
rules and this and that and how you're supposed to feel and how you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to do this and not, and not like this and not like that. Yeah, be yourself, but just not like that. All of that. It's all covered up, buried underneath all that stuff. So, yeah, it's exactly this. Anyway. So, right, and like, slimy, all these fancy terminologies and everything, but is it basically taking your strongest desires and pushing away the fears or the status or whatever it is or the social pressures or whatever and just going towards your goal basically as strongly as you can? Or? No, meaning is that sort of how you become yourself, yourself, the true self that you want to be, that you're stri meaning it's 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 very you're very deep and you're very I'm I'm and and you're very professional, but in a way to explain it, um, hmm, Hanamindi, you help me out. You're doing a great job. She's saying simplistically, yes or no, Shlemy. But yeah, like without being so fancy and stuff, like like how can you do that? Meaning, there's so many different, you know, you give me touching on so many different things, like, you know, your inner critic and this and that. Each one, each lesson in itself is probably a four session, you know, um, each one is a different piece to work mm -hmm. on. But how mm -hmm. do you, if you want to, like, you say, let's say someone says, I'm whatever amount of years old, and either, you know, I'm not going to go to a psychologist, the social worker, every, for, for every single aspect, right? And I'm not mm -hmm. going to uncover every single part, and I'm not going to go up into studies. And I, it's just not going to happen. I'm busy with this. I'm busy with that. If I want to pick one way to head towards that goal, what would you say? <laughs> that's, I, I don't know. If that's, oh. I guess, to make it more practical. So first, let me tell you that because there's a class for women, it's a very different answer than it is for men. Because for men, you can never escape the job of becoming. It's a constant work of becoming who you are. Now, Khamenei is going to jump and say, wait a second, didn't you say you're like a child of being? There's many different ways to describe that. But yes, you could be excited, but you're always busy. You're, and it's, it's a constant job of becoming who you are. A woman is very different. Like we said in the past, and we'll talk about it as, as we go on, a woman intuitively knows who she is and she has to just protect that, not to get pulled down. That's where the Mesotzniyas comes from, that she's the home, she's the, she's the receptacle, she has to maintain that she's the, she holds the womb, she is the womb, she holds the child inside, she's the protective, she has to connect with who she is. So really, it's, it's essentially not allowing the outside forces to penetrate. That's really, as a woman, the job of being means to say protecting. That if, if a woman does that, then she maintains the purity that every child is born with. A man is a little bit different, but the Tino part of a woman is to hold on to the dreams. Don't let them tear away the dreams from you. It's basically what's called King of the Hill is the best metaphor. King of the Hill is the game that kids play when you climb to the top of the mountain and then kids try to pull you down and then go to the top. Your job as the Jewish woman is to stay on top, on top of the mountain. Don't let them pull you down. Don't let them degrade you. Don't let them tell you have to dress like this or do that. You stay, you, you maintain your spirituality, your dignity. That's what it means. That's the behavioral job of a woman. Now, obviously, your question was loaded. You wanted to know, does it mean becoming your dream and getting in a critic? Yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's very hard to simplify. But I think I just described it in a behavioral way. And yeah, what you're saying definitely holds a lot of water. It's definitely true that it's like we're saying. It's, it's just being yourself. And if you're being yourself, everything will go accordingly. You're not going to make, you're not going to compromise. No one's dumb. You're not going to compromise what's good or bad. You'll only do it if you don't believe in yourself. So of course, we're going to come to self-belief and self-compassion. All these things come into it. So it's very hard to simplify because Hashem didn't give us a simple world. He gave us a complex organism called a human being. Yeah. And, yeah. Carly, that was <laughs> your question. So you have a response? Do I have a Sorry. response? Uh, I just, I'm just have a comment. You know, the, what you're saying about climbing the mountains. Miyala Bahara My siblings laughed at me. I used to like the song. It's the same concept of staying, maintaining that level. Mm -hmm. Hold on to that purity. That's what the mikveh is. The mikveh is tikva. The hope comes from the mikveh. The purity. That's a whole shir in itself. 
But it's all the same thing. Hold on to the purity. Go back to who you are. When you go to the mikvah, you go back to who you are, to the original waters. They can't be mayim shuvim. They have to be pure. Mayim chayim. You got to go back to life. When you're underwater, you can't breathe. You're like a, you're like a fetus in the embryo. That's what it means. Go back to who you are. That's tshuva. That's where the woman starts over the cycle. It's like the levana. The Jewish people can print the levana. It's all the same thing. Come back to who you are. That's what make kiddush levana. That's kedusha. It's all, it's all the thing. It's coming back to who you are. Stop running from who you are. You're beautiful. Be you. Amen. Okay. I mean, do, does everyone have to go back to who they are? Do they have to get it in life? Or do they have to just try to do the right thing? I'm just like... So like the, the, PSS, the PSS talks about this in B'nai Machshav I just saw it today when I was looking for this line about learning to be a child. He, he says, he says, don't think you're going to go through life without figuring out who you are. And like, as if that's good enough. And we can maybe discuss that next. I didn't know where next class is going to go because I went like a whole different direction to address these questions. I mean, Zahab asked, which I hope they're partly okay with. Um, but I'm going to come back where I was going before. But yeah, he says, yeah, a person has to become themselves. Bishvili nivra oilam means to say, I got to discover my show. I got to live in my path. I can't just go. I can't just go. Which path? Now, Khanamin and me are saying two truths. I'm saying, if you are being, you will find your path. And Khanamin is saying, you could have help saying, where do I go? Do I go right? Do I go left? People could show, oh, your path is over there. Go there. Oh, go there. And that, that, but you got to get your path. Right. Some people need that help, though, Shlaimi. Like, some people are more, I know I said this already several times, but some people are naturally more in touch. And by you saying the same thing a bunch of times, just be you, just be you, just be you. It doesn't necessarily, it's like, what? Me? What? I don't know who I am. I've, I, I've heard several people say that. And it's like, that's, some people need that extra guidance. It's like, oh, that's. No doubt. No doubt. Some people need casts. Some people need bandages. Some people need medicine. No, no doubt. But that, if you're coming for a guide to life, that's the, you're going to say, this is the diet you should use. Some people, that's terrible for the diet. Okay. Right. There are exceptions. We're talking about here the main path. That's what it, most people should do is to be vulnerable, is to be like the child. Then, yes, everyone needs what they need. So you're right. You bring up other points. Definitely valid points. All right. I don't want to max it out. So people should I, like discuss. I feel satiated. I hope other people do as well. Thank right, you, Shlomi. Thank, thank you, Shlomi. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Project class at gmail.com, please. Tell your friends because I'm not advertising this, not going out. It's only for growth-oriented people, but we want people who – could share in the conversation to be part of this because it's not about me, it's about us. So um, please get the word out, but only for those who uh, fit the bill. Thank you so much. Yeah. Be well, everybody. Thank you, Shloimi. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone.